Welcome Classic Rock fans to another episode of Classic Album Review where classic albums are excavated and explored and today we're looking at John Anderson's Elias of Sun Hillo. This album is the first solo album by John Anderson which tells the story of this interstellar exodus. Uh, interstellar exodus of biblical proportions it has to be said. It's as an alien race's journey to find a, a new world after a geographical disaster on their home planet. It is partly inspired by the artwork of Roger Dean. It certainly references the fragile album cover, the Morglade Mover, of course, is from that album. And uh, but it was also inspired by the influences of the writings of the mystic uh, Vera Stanley Alder, who John Anderson was uh, imbibing at the time. The narrative is one of exploration, uh, one of hope, uh, I have to say, and the narrative gravitates around Elias. That name Elias has this uh, very Old Testament resonances to it. Who builds this Morglade mover that very much is very much like the Ark, of course, from Genesis. It's an album replete with Anderson's spiritual uh, flourishes and indulgences. It's a bit like Paramahansa Yogananda meets Tolkien. It's a record full of these magical musings and musical interludes as we follow the progress of this intergalactic spacecraft. It was certainly enough to keep the Yes Faithful on board, so to speak. The music is full of intriguing, exquisite sonic detail. Uh, it, it is at times captivating, it has to be said. Some of the, the way this music is layered and textured is, is just uh, beguiling. And Anderson performs the music uh, virtually entirely by himself, which is uh, a no mean feat, is it? Uh, you know, including vocals, guitars, harp, percussion, synths, which all add these wonderful sweeping atmospherics to the record and uh, all add some colour to this, to this very biblical narrative arc. Uh, the music is airy and esoteric and it certainly might not be everyone's cup of herbal tea. It lacks the bite, I think, of a classic yes or yes at their best, but nevertheless it's still a, a wonderful, wonderful record. One that starts to meander into what I would call psychedelic folk territory, a bit like the incredible string band but without the droning. This is certainly music to attune one's at chakras too. It's, uh, you know, it's replete with adventure, quest, evocative soundscapes and gorgeous melodies. In fact, Chris Welsh from Melody Maker just uh, said, it's an unashamedly romantic solo album that combines grace, taste and power. As I've said, there are a few influences on this record, uh, notably Roger Dean's uh, depiction of the Morglade mover. And uh, there's certainly lots of Tolkien thrown in for good measure. But also specifically the writings of the mystic Vera, uh, Vera Stanley Alder. In fact, if I, if I may quote Wikipedia, Alder's book describes a theory of four nature tribes that once lived on a planet. Uh, the tribes are Negro, Oriental, Nordic and Asian, which became the four tribes in Elias, of course. Tribes uh, best described as music consciousness tribes rather than uh, actual people, I think. Anson went off for about a year to spend his time writing about this magician slash hero that uh, rescues his people from their dying planet in this very galleon uh, arc-like uh, the vessel. And the musical accompaniment to this record has caused many to describe this as the Missing Yes album. I however think that this album more foreshadows Anderson's work with Vangelis later in the 80s. It has to be said that Vangelis does not play on this record, although uh, claims to the contrary. But on this one, Anderson goes all Middle Earth on us. In fact, Murray Ewing has written, there's a dangerous swerve towards the new age in Anderson's first solo album, both in, an, in the optimistic whimsy of its fantasy world and the musical palette of its soft sparkling synths and world instruments. But overall it is a remarkable, brain-boggling uh, concept album. Um, the epitome of everything we love and some might say hate about progressive rock. Yet for my money it's one of the most original, exotic, hypnotic and complex of prog albums. Uh, what Anderson achieves with the instrumentation is just remarkable. This uh, overlay, especially his voice. Of course his voice is used exquisitely on this track, and if you're a fan of uh, um, things like topographic oceans and, and yes, it's more esoteric uh, meanderings, then this will be certainly be your cup of tea. This album is a result of a hiatus that yes took after uh, took a brief spell off after the Relay tour, after their spell headlining the Reading Rock Festival. Uh, they were supported on that uh, day by Supertramp, if I'm not mistaken, as well as the Ozark Mountain Daredevils, a southern rock band. 
and they all went off to do solo projects. Of course, Steve Howe had his beginnings with its uh, knotty guitar solos. And of course, Chris Squire famously did Fish Out of Water, which is another, another remarkable album. An album, in fact, of anthemic art rock, which actually employed the St. Paul's uh, Cathedral organ. Not to mention Alan White, who did, had his own project going on. He released his album Ramshackled. Elias of Sun Hill, though, is uh, an absolutely intriguing narrative. We get this flaxen hero and uh, this exodus to a new world uh, in some bizarre outer space intergalactic noodly stuff going on there, all perfectly supported by the remarkable uh, sonic soundscapes that we get on this record. Soundscapes created by this alluring blend of exotic instrumentation, Celtic Asian instrumentation, in fact, tape loops, keyboard strings, percussion instruments, including, I've got a list here, harp, wooden flute, Asian bell, sitar, moog, uh, something for everybody on this album. Obviously what's most, most intriguing for Yes fans is uh, Anderson's use of his voice and layered vocals. Uh, he even uses, even creates a new language for one track, Sound Out the Galleon, a language that has always, I think, fascinated Yes fans, especially the permanently stoned ones. What is created here is an eddying swirl of sound, um, an atmospheric uh, foray into the fantasy realm. Uh, we're obviously at the very heart of it, a very sound and solid eco message. I mean, let's not forget the, the Green Party as it was. Uh, um, it was still called the Ecological Party, but at the time still widely dismissed as being the haven for cranks and hippies. Maybe Anderson felt very much at home there. Uh, interestingly, uh, a little bit of a, um, a bit of an aside, some interesting information for you. The actual studio, Anderson's own studio, that he recorded this album, he later went on to sell to Irish crooner Val Dunican. This album possesses what one critic has described as a diaphanous mysticism, with its interstellar journeying and its Roger Dean inspired cover. The artwork, uh, incidentally, was by a chap named uh, uh, David Fairbrother Rowe, who was actually famous for doing the designing the three posts for the Isle of Wight festivals from about 69 to 68 to 70. It seems like a natural progression for Anderson. It comes straight off the shirt tails of topographic oceans and relay and is full of this sonic detail, um, this intricate web of uh, sonic exploration that we got on those two albums as it weaves what is essentially an escapist narrative. Mark Blake describes the process of putting the album together which uh, certainly was rather taxing on Anderson. He goes on to write, late one night after trying to coordinate the tracks yet again, Anderson dozed off at the console. When he awoke, he had no idea if the process had worked. As the dawn chorus began outside, the hazy sunlight peeked through the studio window. Anderson pressed play. A perfectly synchronized one-man mini symphony floated out of the speakers. So let's think of the album's plot, its narrative arc, no pun intended. Uh, if I may refer to my notes. The story takes us to the planet of Sun Hillo, of course, and this planet is the home to the four tribes of uh, Nagrunium, Aster, Aster, uh, oh God, Asteranius, Oractanium, uh, Nordrain, and Norderanius. If I've said any of those names wrong, uh, in the, in, to quote Bart Simpson, you know, bite me. Uh, and each of these worlds represents a different aspect of awareness. It's all about musical consciousness, as I've said, specifically. And uh, this consciousness comes under threat after the aforementioned catastrophic uh, uh, volcanic eruption. Elias, of course, is our central protagonist here, a magician, and, and very reminiscent of the Book of Genesis, uh, is chosen to be the architect of an arc named the Morglade Mover. But rather gather gather the animals two by two. He, look, he embarks to gather all the four tribes of his own planet. He employs the help of uh, our fellow magicians uh, Ranyart, who is the harp playing navigator of the glider, and Coquake, the mystic, who knows perhaps uh, loosely based on Anderson himself, who unites the four tribes, uh, and they all leave the planet together. But Elias fashions the Moonglade Mover out of uh, trees and, and fish, which he persuades to surrender their lives for a greater cause. Meanwhile, Coquake travels across a uh, sun hillow full of beans and vegan cheese to persuade uh, the four tribes of sun hillow to join him and to embark on this exodus. 
Uh, with the, the population in a trance and seated on the Morglade move, the ship leaves Sun Hillo just before the planet explodes in a in a uh, eruption of tears and sighs. However, not all is plain sailing. They're ultimately uh, besieged by this force called Moon Ra, who feeds on their their collective uh, distrust, frustration with their situation and panic. Of course, it's Elias who brings things uh, into order, placates Moon Ra, I believe through the singing of chords of love and life, perhaps no doubt a passage from Yeses uh, and you and I. The Morglade Mover lands on a new planet named Asgard. The tribe disembark and go their own ways, whereas the heroes of our story, of course, Elias, Coquake and Aranyart, ascend Asg Asgard's mountains to sleep and become one with the universe. So there's no doubt that this album evokes a very mystical, otherworldly atmosphere, not only in its narrative thread, but the mu its musical textures also. And it has to be said, they all float effortlessly into each other. It gives, it really certainly does give an impression of gliding along, which is uh, quite interesting and intriguing. I think Anderson has achieved something remarkable with this album. The compositions vary between acoustic and structured songs, more free floating, spacey passengers, the use of repetition adds a distinctly hypnotic feel to it. Uh, and the mix of layering of Anderson's voice, we get this sonically cohesive balance that's beautifully complements the, the story that's unfolding. This science fantasy driven concept album and ethereal Eastern exploration of uh, instrumentation, you can just hear the, uh, the heckles rising as a whole generation are about to decry from the rooftops of their council houses, uh, no future anarchy in the UK. I know I'd be interested to know what you think of this record, um, what do you think of this album? Obviously it's one for the Yes fans, I don't know how many of my Patreons are hardcore Yes fans, but I absolutely uh, love this record, I really do. You can really lose yourself in it, I find it has an almost hypnotic vibe. I know I'd just like to say thank you so much for being Patreons, thank you for requesting this album, giving me the chance to delve into it. Thank you for your support, your continued support, which I hope I can rely on for the, the coming year. And um, it just leads me to say, stay warm, stay safe, enjoy the summer, but most of all, uh, please do keep listening.